This November will have many curveballs as El Nino dynamics kick in. One of the things that's going to be persistent is the Northwest flow. As we'll have more cold fronts coming in from the north, we'll look to the Aleutian Islands where some of that colder air will funnel in from the Northwest flow and traverse across the Great Lakes through the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic and into the northeast and at the same time we'll have a much more active subtropical jet stream as the jet stream starts to lower we'll be looking out towards into eastern pacific where we look to have some recurves of these eastern pacific storm systems that will get caught up in the overall subtropical jet stream and give these areas across the south and central u.s more opportunities for above average rainfall. So if you take a look at the tropics, here's what's happening right now. So we do have that system out there into the Atlantic that will soon be Tropical Storm Tammy. And all indications are that system will be continuing to traverse across west northwest bound, but likely will be recurving out into the open waters a little bit more concerning is out here into the eastern pacific where we do actually have two areas of activity and a lot of the indication are as we head into the middle of next week some of that precipitation will be spread northbound and be able to get caught up in that overall subtropical jet stream and spread its precipitation back into the south and central US. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily updates on this channel. And I would love to reach 225,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at the vertical velocity index. So I can't look at this a lot because it kind of you know, kind of shows where all the sinking air is and maybe where the upward rising motion air is. And this week, it's fairly calm in a good part of the US. The only instability is really gonna be on this storm system that we've been watching this fall storm that's gonna be draped across and driving down into the Great Lakes and gonna bring more heavy rainfall across a good part of the east, but especially into the northeast as we head into this weekend. But going into next week, things change a lot because we'll be looking at the overall jet stream. And as this becomes comes across, it's gonna be able to pull some of that energy down there into the Eastern Pacific. And all indication are that that area of instability will be get entrenched into the subtropical jet stream and pull its abundance amount of moisture back into Texas, into New Mexico, and a good part of the central and northern parts of the U.S., especially as we go into middle of next week and you know deeper into Minnesota and Wisconsin, all the way up into Michigan. So this will be the favored area, kind of the bullseye, if you will, of the more active flow of precipitation. And that you know is highlighted on the vertical velocity index. Again, these areas in red or yellow, orange here, that is your kind of a sinking air. But notice of all the upward rising motion, the vertical lift, you gotta have some sort of vertical lift to produce showers and thunderstorms and it's abundance across a good part of the central US heading into next week. And all indications are, we are looking at above average rainfalls as it takes advantage of that more active subtropical jet and going into the end of October also continues to remain on the wetter side, especially for the central and eastern two thirds of the U.S. as those systems will be caught up in a little bit more of a northwest and that northwest flow by then. So if you take a look at the overall precipitation just over the next two weeks it's fairly dry across this region this week but heading into the next week the combination of this eastern eastern pacific storm and the more active subtropical jet stream that energy will get pulled into a good part of texas into oklahoma into kansas as well as into arkansas going into missouri into iowa back into illinois 
you know, go into the areas of Minnesota, back into what you know, Wisconsin, as well as into Michigan. These are going to be likely the flow of the areas that are gonna be impacted the most by that more active subtropical jet and that moisture that comes out of the Eastern Pacific. And with the more active Northwest flow, we'll have more opportunities for cold fronts to funnel, funnel further south. And that's gonna produce heavier snows across a good part of the Intermountain West. I think it stays predominantly in the more mountainous regions especially as we go into deeper next week but that will change as we go into november but we'll we'll start to have more areas across the mountain regions producing that heavier snows uh you know like in those ski lovers <laughs> across those across those regions but as we transition and starting that november time frame we'll start to see that ridge kind of build back in across a good part of the west and and the only area of instability the only coolness will likely be across british columbia but a little bit more evident is that area across the northeast where they're going to be in, in the kind of favored area of those below average temperatures across that you know that first week of november time frame so they're going to be that in that persistent northwest flow and overall kind of a you know mjo phase eight type setup going into that first week of November. And with that persistent Northwest flow and with those you know, persistent cold fronts coming in, we are gonna be able to start changing over some of that rain to snow across a good part of the Great Lakes going into that first week of, of November. So we should have areas start to see snow flying in parts of uh, Minnesota and to Wisconsin through Iowa, even areas of portions of say Illinois, Northern Illinois, maybe even the Chicago regions could start to see their first snowfall of the year as we go into that November, you know, that first week of November timeframe. And then going into that second week, we'll start to see the more active subtropical jet again. We'll have these troughs coming in off the lowering of the, of the jet stream and then we'll have another system pulling some of that moisture from the Eastern Pacific again back into these areas across the South. So that's another area where we could have more flow pulling in from the Gulf of Mexico, pulling in from the Eastern Pacific. And this is your precipital water index, kind of highlighting that going into that second week of November, putting that abundance amount of moisture back into these these areas that will likely get it next week back into Texas again, into Oklahoma, into, into Kansas, across the central and southern portions of the U.S. with that persistent flow. And the northwest flow will be active as well going into that middle part of November. So we'll start to see these areas again coming out of the Aleutian Islands, diving from the northwest to the southeast. And we'll start to see pockets of colder air, some of that changing over to snowflakes flying across the Great Lakes and pull down likely our strongest cold front of the season going into fall by the time we head into the middle part of November. You can see the temperature anomalies really drop pretty drastically on the longer range guidance of 15, 20, upwards to almost 25 degrees below average. This will likely be our kind of a strongest cold front so far of fall heading into that middle part of november as it will be coming off that northwest flow going over some of that snowpack that's been left behind of the two prior weeks and that will that will allow that colder air to funnel even south and not be as modified going all the way down and that cold front will likely be reaching the, you know, into the, in, into all the way into Mexico as more areas will be taken, you know, entrenched in that colder air. And that will leave us a pack of, again, more snow even left behind that system as we'll have a renewed snowpack through the Intermountain West, but we'll also areas of that snow line starts to lower further south We'll have a band of swath persistent from that northwest flow again, 
go through areas of say Indiana and Ohio back into the mid-Atlantic region, especially into Pennsylvania, into New Jersey region, and across the portions of the, of the White Mountains region. And then going into the tropics, we'll take a look at that because we still got about six weeks of you know hurricane season left. And it looks to be just based on the vertical velocity index, that it's still going to remain somewhat active. It's still a possibility that we could get maybe several more named storms. I don't think they're going to be hit impact in the United States or anything, but there's going to be a lot of upward lift, especially out there in across the Atlantic, you know, into the Atlantic with all these greens showing up on the map. That kind of gives you an education. It's continuing to remain on the active side. So don't be surprised with these storms coming off the coast of Africa that we'll have even more named storms after we get after we get Tammy to you know to end the month of November and overall for November what we're expecting is is a predominant ridge to be really highlighted across the west and the Pacific Northwest you might have some pockets of coolness across the coastal regions where I think they continue to remain on the somewhat wetter side especially along the coast here but as you go inland a little bit drying out and then of course you'll have those snows in the higher elevations of the Intermountain West but overall predominantly the coldest anomalies will be highlighted across the southeast into portions of the Ohio Valley but especially into the mid-Atlantic and to the northeast again those are the areas that look likely to be favored for those below average uh, temperatures with the middle of the country kind of more or less putting much on a more normal like weather for November standards and overall so for the next 45 days here's kind of your your snowfall outtake and going through all the way through the end of November so we'll have that persistent northwest flow the intermountain west regions will get an abundance amount of snowfall especially in the higher elevations and as that snow will continue to lower throughout the month of November that'll pull the snow line a little bit further south so some of these areas across a good part of the Great Lakes and the Dakotas could pick up easily you know six to eight inches of snow if not more at times or into November and then as this will continue to move from the northwest to the southeast it will likely stop across the northern areas of the higher elevations not likely getting the coastal regions for November but we should start to see some snow flying into portions of New England by then. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video and definitely check out my winter forecast after this update and catch me in the next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.